Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> Damn it. I tried to get it in the recording. <laughs> that would have been great. Oh, man. Oh. Huh. So, Tim, uh-huh. have you seen the new Batman, the latest, the Batman movie? the fl- Or the Flash movie? Sorry. Not yet. No, it's uh, my things to do list. I've just been trying to catch up. There's been a lot of stuff going on, you know, life stuff. And mm-hmm. so I've been able to do most of everything except for just a handful of things, really. So I'm probably, I think it's getting ready to come out on digital already. It's, uh, I think Amazon is about to have yeah. it on their in theater at home line. Mm-hmm. Like it did, I guess it just didn't really do as good as it. And I'm always going to give my own opinion about it too. I mean, I mean, I'm not too huge of a fan of Ezra Miller to be honest with you. But you know, I was really in for it for Keaton all the way. And um, I don't know. I think I think it might be an okay movie. Not, I mean, not everybody said it was bad and whatnot. So I think it's just, I think it's just going to be a matter of preference, or if I want to consider it part of the DC universe. And then I'm already reading reports on the whole Aquaman two thing, just constantly doing reshoots and stuff. And now it's kind of like in some kind of uh, turmoil, if you will. I don't know how it's going to adapt with the other movies and stuff like that. But apparently, Flash was supposed to do all that for everybody. So I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. To answer your question, still sounds like a. Uh... DC can't make a uh, live action movie. Nope. Really oh. can't. You know, and I wonder how much the writer strike is. I mean, I imagine the writer strike is frozen filming on pretty much everything. I mean, I've, I've seen that from Deadpool three. Um, that that the uh, writer strike and um, is, you know, pay the writers. They write great scripts. They write entertainment products we want to see. I mean, not to get on my high horse here. Just pay them. You're gonna make your money back. Well, I hear the big issue, though, is studios are starting to jump into the AI technology to write this stuff. And if yeah. they could get an AI to write it and people like it, why do I need to pay a person to do it? It's the same starting. thing with the uh, actor strike. Starting. They, they want to, um, one of the biggest uh, hurdles on the contract is if I want to go be a stand in in a movie. Yeah. I basically sign myself over and they can use my image and likeness for perpetuity forever. And I don't get anything for it. And, they can, get a, and they can get away from actually having to hire people. And use I want AI that deal with it. money. I want, I want to be able to, to take digital copies of my money and just be able to use that money in perpetuity without it ever coming out of my account. See how dumb that sounds? That that I'm not not saying not saying that uh, Brent, I wasn't calling you dumb. I'm saying that whole idea of that is is dumb. Well, that's the unfortunately that's the side effect of everybody wanting to jump into this AI technology. It's yeah. going to start phasing out jobs for people, 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 and people's jobs. Yeah, and yeah, that's. If you could sit there and have one person load in information into a computer and then it spits out 10 different things, it could replace 10 different people. Yeah, but there's no, there's no, I don't, I mean, I don't know because I haven't, I've never used an AI program for anything. Um, but you can't replicate creativity no matter how hard you try. You can, you can have a million AIs write a million scripts, you can't replicate creativity. I don't care how many AIs you use, you can't get the script to Pulp Fiction. You can't get the script to Reservoir Dogs or um, Goodfellas. Any any anybody that that does quality, you couldn't you couldn't get the script to Soul Plane if you let AI write it. I mean, <laughs> well, but so, then on the flip side, the I mean, you can also make the argument that sometimes the creativity is lacking. Yeah, I mean. It's you get into some of these movies and it's just like you think it's going to be good and it's just like not there. Yeah, well, you'll remakes. get about 50, Yeah, you'll get all the Hallmark Christmas movies with AI. <laughs> it's, they're all Mitch the same story. They just change. They just huh? change the story. Big city yeah. woman goes to small Alabama town and it snows the first time in seventy-two yeah. years. You just insert whatever like middle America state you want. You know, Chicago girl goes back to Kansas and meets the guy that she always wanted, Jim. 
Okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Jim. <laughs> so we were talking about the uh, Flash movie and uh, Michael Keaton. Now, I've been seeing on Facebook, and Tim, you could probably answer this. Was there at one time plans to make a Batman 3 with Michael Keaton? There was, from what I understood, there was a, a script, but it was totally different. And I think there was even at one point they were talking about Marlon Wayans being Robin as well. Uh, there was even a script for Superman where Nick Cage was supposed to play as uh, Superman. Um, and then I want to say he makes a cameo. I don't know, spoiler alert, he might make a cameo on this. I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, but yeah, I think there was supposed to be one. And then it got to the point where I think Keaton said that he wouldn't work unless it's Tim Burton. So that's why we didn't see him in the third Batman at that point. Speaking of the Nick Cage, Superman. Didn't he get like a whole bunch of money for that and it never got... From what I understand, yeah. He got a bunch of money to play Superman. I think he put the suit on, did the whole nine yards. I, I think that movie never went anywhere. Yeah, he was going to do it. That's as far as he got was the suit. That was as far as he got was the suit. Yeah, they took some pictures of him in different suits. Got to say, Lois Lane. <laughs> I got to say, Lois, I'm coming. <laughs> So freak you know, out. Who would have made a, a good Superman would have been walking. He know? got he got paid four million dollars to not play Superman in the aborted <laughs> 1997 Tim Burton reboot. Damn. How do I get that gig? Somebody pay me to not work. All right. Instead of working on AI, pay me to now work on the next step. Pay me to not work. Yeah. <laughs> AI to do all the other work. Shit. I still need to go see or sit down and watch uh, Ant Man and Quantumania. Finally finished yeah. that movie. Yeah. We do too. How was it? Was wasn't it? my favorite out of the three, but it was, it got, to me, I think it got more entertaining halfway at the second half of the movie. Like, to me, I started like actually paying more attention to it and everything. That's just my opinion. Not the best. I mean, it wasn't the best out of them and everything like that, but I mean, it was still, it had its quirks, it's funny and everything. And then, um, you know, they were trying to make a big deal with the main villain in there and everything. Of course, now he was, you know, he kind of been in the news lately and everything. I think he, I don't know if he got acquitted from him or whatever, but you know, no, his no, I think they're slowly, I think they're in the process of getting them, those charges yeah, dropped. Yeah, like his, his, his career's gone, you know, and he was supposed to be like built up to be this big, badass super villain. You know, he was the second Thanos. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm pretty sure they'll find somebody to fill in the spot there, of course, and everything. So we'll see how that goes. I'm looking have forward you, to though. Have forward. either of you two seen Guardians 3 yet? Not yet. I'm about to watch. I think it's getting ready to come up on Disney if it hasn't already. Wait a second. That is definitely my uh, one of the ones I want to watch. And then I want to see the, uh, I didn't get to see the Mario movie. I wanted to see it in movie theater so bad. Dude. It so, is so good. Yeah, Mario, like I said, life it is so good. Life just gets in the way and everything, but yeah, it um, is belly aching funny. Like, like there are there are some like gut busting, funny funny moments in that movie. A lot of heart to it too. Yeah, um, and then of course, pardon me for one second. I know For it's those out of who are watching, um, we are currently being assaulted auditorily uh, by the Bark Brigade, my two dogs, because the pizza's <laughs> here. Oh, it's it's barely coming through. You can hear it lightly. Yeah, it's on uh, Redbox, the Mario movie. Mm -hmm. It's I funny. Say, I want to say it's coming it out of Peacock here pretty soon. So, by the way, we're not sponsored by any of those entities. Although, if you'd like to, to uh, if you're interested in a sponsorship, we'll be more than happy to sponsor to or to be be sponsored. Namely, um, I would love to be sponsored by Hendrix Gin. Hendrix, the gin that doesn't taste just like gin. Good stuff. Uh, we need to get sponsored by Sun King. I'll take all of them. We can be sponsored they, by a bunch they, of stuff. They have a beer that I seen at the liquor store the other day that Am it's called Amber Has Two Moms. 
So. That's so many avenues I can go with that it was one. A, it was a American Amber Ale. The only Ooh. problem is, is some Amber Ales are really good. Some are like, yeah, not my type. So, You know what but, yeah. I've been really digging is a uh, Red Irish Ale, you know. I mean, I, I don't know why that stuff is so good. I, I haven't found one I haven't liked yet so far, you know. Uh, Would you drink in Killian's? There was Killian's, and then of course uh, Jeremiah Red at BJ's restaurant. Right. You know, mm-hmm. that, that, that that is a really good beer. You know. I have, this is honestly this is the first time in a while that I've had beer. I usually just been drinking more of the liquor lately. Yeah. Now well, we're talking about go back to movies. Uh, was mentioned when I mentioned Guardians Three. That movie. Prepare to get tugged at your heartstrings. There is some parts in that movie it just wants to pull. So, just heads up when you watch it. And then Saturday, I'm taking two of my kids, and we're going to go see Oppenheimer in IMAX. Oh, you're not going to take them to see Barbie? <laughs> no, we're not going to see not Barbie Hammer? We're not doing Barbie Hammer or Barbie Hammer. Barbie Hammer. Bar- yeah. Barbie Hammer. Yeah. yeah. I guarantee there's going to be a small independent chain that's going to do a double feature, buy one ticket, and get back-to-back showings of it. Because that's like the whole thing on social media right now is the Barbie and Oppenheimer mixes. There's even the trailer posters people have made. Yeah, they, you know somebody was marketing that to see where that would go, and it, and it paid off pretty well. <laughs> so it did. But I have seen the reviews that I've seen of – the Barbie movie, I, I saw a couple that were like nine out of ten, four out of five stars, that kind of stuff. And then the Oppenheimer movie, I haven't seen one review where it wasn't a perfect review. Uh, let's see. Movies in theaters. I guess we'll let uh, Oppenheimer, our- 93% Rotten Tomato score, which doesn't have a critic score or a fan score. Uh, Barbie's getting an 88 Rotten Tomato score and a 91% uh, fan score. I, I think well, we should wait until one of our official Beers of War members talking to you, Kim, uh, <laughs> to see what uh, see what she's going to think about it. And she's, probably the, she's probably the reason it's 91%. Maybe she's going to go see it Saturday. Keep signing in different profiles. and yeah. I know I know my wife. I think my wife and daughter might go see it. I know Misty wants to go see it, so... It's not on my radar. And then if you actually log into Forza 5 Horizon, you could actually get the Barbie car. You know, oh, sweet. The pink but, Corvette. Back, yeah. in those, back in those days, you know, you were either, you know, playing with Barbie or you were playing with He-Man and Skeletor. Masters did you see, of the Universe. Speaking of He-Man, did you see Netflix drop the uh, mm-hmm. He-Man? I'm not trying to say anything bad about this guy or anything because I really love his work as Kevin Smith and everything. I'm wondering if his um, his rendition of the He-Man series kind of put a damper on that decision. You know, I, I just kind of wonder if it was because I watched, you know, He-Man was a Revelations or something like that. And, you know, first season, it, it was OK. I mean, just didn't go where I thought it would go. And the second one was all right as well and everything, but I just felt like it needed to have more of this guy right there, you know, or He-Man in the He-Man movie. Yeah. So, so I'm wondering if that were the case, that's what they decided to do because I mean, who the hell knows, dude, I mean, anything, it could be anything. Somebody will probably pick it up later on down the road and they'll try to do it again. Yeah. Just with everything going on, I think, starting to see more and more reports people are starting to kind of get uh burned out on comic book and superhero movies right now yeah yeah they need, they need a new everybody's looking for a new franchise well i think the video game franchise is going to be taken over here pretty soon we talked about this before and everything so exactly uh, you know i'm waiting you know netflix still they're still on my radar when it comes to like some video games that are starting with assassin's creed which i thought they should have done that in the first place and not make it a movie uh, Bioshock's getting ready to come out with those guys over there. Um, so there, there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be a lot of people going out. There's going to be plenty of money to be made. And um, I think that's going to be like the new, the new, new. You know what I mean? It goes back to, goes back oh, to how long this strike's going to last, too. How long this stuff's going to get. Yeah. 
postponed indefinitely because now I'm starting to hear people saying the Deadpool movie's going to get delayed now, even though they moved it, it up. They six stopped months. filming. Yeah, but I thought they were done with the filming, and that's I, the reason I they that, were able to move it up six months. Yeah, that's what I had heard. I was under the impression they were they were done, and all they got to do is like do the editing and, and stuff they just like couldn't that. go back and change any of the can't couldn't go back and read change any of the dialogue anything like that because of the writer's strike but they because they couldn't make changes that allowed them to move it up six six months and if i'm not mistaken ryan reynolds is one of the producers of the deadpool movie which means he he dipped on both roles as far as i understand as far as i know i may be wrong about that if i'm wrong hey that's fine if i'm wrong Put it in the comments. I don't know. That's one of my anticipated movies, though. When I heard about the oh, strike and everything, oh, yeah. I'm like, you know what? I mean, this was it was bound to happen anytime, even when video games nowadays. You know, every time they give them a release date and everything like that, I don't, I don't take it seriously. I never do. You know, I probably stopped doing that. With, when Gears 3, Gears of War 3 came out, because it was supposed to come out at a certain time, and I think it came out like three months later or something like that. You know, so, I mean, I get it. You need to polish something. You need to make it, you mm -hmm. know, shine and make sure you got everything taken care of. And I wish, you know, a lot of video game companies would put more effort in doing that with their games instead of releasing this half-ass shit, pardon my French. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm thinking that's fine. I'm fine with it. You know, you're going to delay it, fine. You think you have... I don't know. I don't. I don't find people confident enough to give release dates just yet. They need to put something out there though to kind of give them a time frame of when it's supposed to come out, of course. But that's just me. I mean, I, I'm serious. I, I just don't think it really matters anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, and like we've mentioned on previous episodes, the delay is all right if they're going to come out with a polished product. If exactly. They're just delaying it, just to delay it, and it's not good when it comes out there's it's glitchy there's bugs it crashes on day one you can't log into the servers to play multiplayer online then that ticks people off more than just the delay itself i know that if i was a video game developing company if i was running one or whatever and we put out a product and stuff like that i would find having a day one patch embarrassing like really embarrassing you know just to me it just shows you know you're not putting a lot of heart and soul you're when you put that deadline on people and everything, they don't get to think more freely. You know, they're too busy trying to meet that deadline and trying to get everything pushed out and see if they can get by with what they have with the product that they have. You know, well, sadly, I, this is a business, and so they run everything the way that they run virtually every other business, which is try to get as much as you can with as little as you can get by with. Mm -hmm. And so they're squeezing. I mean, the, the people who write, who make these games, the, the testers, the developers, the, the screenwriters, all that, that whole nine yards, they're just getting squeezed. And at some point, you squeeze something long enough, you're going to run out of juice. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's what's happening right now, but I mean, in some cases, delays are warranted. Um, I'd rather have a game that's delayed because they need to fix some things then just have a complete flop or just have the same game regurgitated year on year on year, Madden. Mm -hmm. I was reading okay. a, I, I was reading a report today, somewhere in Facebook or something like that. They're saying that 2023 is going to have too many games now being released. I don't give a oh, damn at this point. They need game to be Pass is ramping up their drops. That's just past like two weeks. It's like seven games that dropped on game pass. Mm-hmm. And they're probably they're more coming with before the, there's more coming before the end of the month. They're, they're probably making new ones. They're probably like bringing new ones in and everything because there's with all these releases that are coming out, I imagine some of them are going to be on Game Pass. So see how that goes. Um, yeah, you can go online on Xbox right now and download the demo for what's the Life of P game. It's supposed to be the one where you're playing as a Pinocchio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I played about. 10 minutes into the demo then i had stuff i had to do so i had to log out so far i wasn't i was quite impressed with it so you see yourself like playing through it so i might through. actually uh get into a little bit more and uh pay attention to it i was just i had the volume down i wasn't really paying attention to the sub the subtitles but i mean it looked like an overall fun game well i've been trying to play catch up on some of the games that i have i've been you know, 
kind of just being by myself lately and going on the PS5. You know, another um, show uh, game they're talking about bringing in is Horizon Zero Dawn, which that was the first PS4 game I ever beat, and it was such a beautiful game. I am now playing Horizon Forbidden West, which I'm just trying to. I'm not going to be able to like 100 percent and I know that because it's just going to take too much time and everything. But I'm getting pretty close to getting the things that I want. I think I'm pretty close to beating it, actually. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I think after that, I'm going to jump into The Last of Us Part uh, Two, because I think I'm already hearing word around the grapevine. They're working on part three. So that's going to be kind of cool to see as well. You know, so I, I kind of just want to get more burst in it. And it's going to be great. It's going to be good. I was playing uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising lately, getting into that. that was I heard fun. that was a good game. It, it's actually, been out for a while, but yeah. Yeah, it's an Ubi, Ubisoft game. So I was like, yeah, I keep seeing it. It looks kind of like my style of game. So I went ahead and downloaded it off the of Game Pass. And I'm about 40% through it right now. Yeah. It's kind of, I want to say it got overshadowed by another game, didn't it? When it uh, came out? I think it I think it did, but I can't remember because it's been a while. I, yeah. I like the humor because as you're playing the game, uh, Prometheus and Zeus are kind of narrating the story as you progress. And it's kind of humorous as Prometheus is telling the story. Mm -hmm. And Zeus is just kind of sitting there giving color commentary every once in a while and putting a little wisecrack in there or ask a question. But as you're playing on and you're, you're playing as that character – and you're helping to basically save this Greek, this Greek realm from the a monster from the underworld. And then you got to go rescue, save other uh, gods and goddesses like uh, Ares got turned into a, a rooster. So you got to go complete his quest, quest area to unlock him and get him changed back to a god that's not in rooster form. So... So far, I mean, like I said, it's fun. It's easy. It's fun. It's quite entertaining, quite humorous. So, what are you playing lately, Kip? Um, I've been playing some Madden. Um, I actually downloaded Call of Duty um, Modern Warfare Two just to play the campaign. I'm not venturing into the multiplayer um, because the campaign usually has pretty good story. Uh, mm -hmm. I, so I, I enjoy the story. I definitely enjoy the one in Modern Warfare, the reboot of Modern Warfare. And um, so far, I'm not very far into it, but I'm, I'm enjoying the story of uh, Modern Warfare 2. And yesterday, I picked up uh, from BJ's store, Games to Go, in Longview, Texas. If you happen to be in the area and watching the video, please support local business. Um, I picked up uh, the AEW Fight Forever game. Um, I am a legacy wrestling fan I, I do enjoy some of the aew product and i'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to getting into it. it it's a more arcadey type game from from what i've heard and it sounds like something to be you know just fun to you know run through a couple of hours with and, and enjoy some heck yeah like, i want end up watching was it sunday night i end up watching uh the 1992 royal rumble it was on youtube <clears throat> wow so I watched it from start to finish. I say one of my favorite wrestling games. I don't play a whole lot of them either, but this one is probably the most nostalgic one to me. WrestleMania 2000 for the N64. I mean, I you can. I've, it, I it played was really that cool. one. It's really I played, good. Uh, played NC, uh, WCW versus NWO game back in the day. Yeah. I mean, I played them on PlayStation and stuff, but that one right there, I had a lot of fun, good times with my friend Warren. We got to customize, create our own character and do our own kind of moves and stuff like that. Like, I was like, I got really good at it. And then I I tried to play it the other day, and I was like, it's gone. <laughs> I lost everything. I don't know what else to do. I can't remember. But it's still fun. That was a fun wrestling game. I love that. Have you, have you guys noticed that when we go try to play a retro game, it's like, how did I do this? I, mm -hmm. I don't like what what I, I'm I'm terrible now. Yeah, I, exactly. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can get back into it if I just messed around with it for a while. And uh, mm -hmm. but you know, it's it's more fun when you play with other people. 
Ain't well, fun playing by yourself. <laughs> playing with well, yourself. Well, it's like I've been trying to play uh, some old Gran Grand Turismo games on my PlayStation 2 mm -hmm. and trying to use the joysticks on the uh, joy pads on the controller. And I mean, oh. the technology I back then is so different than using the joysticks now. Well, the Xbox ruined you, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they all have. Well, they kind of didn't change that model with the PlayStation. You know, they still kept the center joysticks and everything. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. Well, it's saying. just not that. It's just like when I'm like trying to drive the car on the track and trying to turn it, it's not as – it doesn't go – it's because of the – it's early t early technology on that. It's not yeah. as smooth and not Your as – back coordination is way better than what it was back then, too. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Gran Turismo was a good one. Got a lot oh, of them. It's a great I love one. The second one, that's the one that blew my mind right there. I've got Gran Turismo 1, 2, and 3. I found my disc from 4, but it's all scratched up. and won't play. So I'm yeah. going to go buy another copy of that one. See if you can get it sanded down. Get it buffed. You can probably do it like at a local library or a video game shop. See, Try that first. See if it works. Oh, man. So have you it. have you dove in, dove into that AEW game yet, or just just? I've got it. I haven't put it on my. I didn't put it on my Xbox yet. Yesterday was a. Um, yesterday I really didn't have a chance to, and um, of course today I'm, you know today we're we are shooting the podcast. So I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to go ahead and download it. Maybe get get some play in this weekend, and uh, when we shoot the next podcast, I'll let everybody know how what I think of the game, what my thoughts are. So, you two had a lot of stuff going on the last couple of weeks. Why don't you clear everybody in what was going on? Um, we, uh, what was it, June? Went to yeah. Dallas Comic Con and had a spectacular time. Um, saw some, saw some really cool, uh, saw some really cool exhibits, saw some really cool. And for those of you who are looking at, um, Beer Ninja, that is, Myself, my lovely wife Stacy, Tim, and our good friend B Rock, and in the middle there, in the green outfit, is the lovely Miss Rosario Dawson. She is a very, very sweet lady. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, the celebrity photo ops are always the best. Um, I had a great time there. If you go, if, if you and we found this out, if you go, make a weekend of it. That way you can shop on Friday because Saturday is just punishment at some point because there are there were the the time we went the time we all went Brandon I think there were maybe fifty thousand people there we're pushing close to eighty now on Saturday and it, I guess they it, still it was had part of the area blocked off yes it it was crowded it was congested. They really need to expand the show floor. Not that anybody in Dallas is listening, but if, if you happen to see this, they really need to expand the show floor um, and and eliminate some of the choke points. Because up the AC too. Yeah, yeah, because eighty thousand people put off a lot of body heat and smell and <laughs> and, and body odor. There are there are, there are some who have con funk, and it was. It was uh, it was fun. We had a great time. We always have a great time when we go. But I mean, there there are some legitimate gripes that probably need to be resolved. And Tim, I'll let you talk about uh, what we did this past Saturday while I go fetch something. Okay. Well, we got to go to our local Comic Con here in East Texas, and. Uh, we had a really good time. You know, it's it's always going to be a small one that we have. But, you know, they'll get people over there. And, uh, you know, people you've heard of or people from your past, you know, when it comes to old cartoons and stuff like that, Star, uh, Star Wars. So one of the main reasons I was super excited to go uh, and, and the picture that you see in here right now that Kevin's holding is we're getting uh, an autographed picture of Mr. I believe John Morton. And yes. we we visited him exactly five years ago to that day um, when uh, it was me and Kevin and we took his, his uh, son, Trevor and uh, Elijah. And uh, we wanted to go. And I was like, hey, man, this would be a great idea to bring Trevor with us because he's like he, our first root beers of war. 
because John Morton basically started that whole thing. If you don't know who John Morton is, he was actually one of the Boba Fett's in Empire Strikes Back. So uh, that was really cool seeing him again. So we got to uh, we got to talk to him about it. You know, he uh, back five years ago, we were saying who our gamer crew was, where the beers of war and everything. And <clears throat> he looked at Trevor and Trevor was just a little guy, little guy. And, you know, he just looked at me, he goes, well, what are you, the root beer of war? And it just clicked. It just clicked with Kev, uh, Kevin yeah. and I. We're like, yeah, we need to get the kids involved in this now. Deemed by Boba Fett himself. Five years later, we decided to hold off on talking to him because we want to go circle around, do a little shopping, get to see everybody else, take pictures of people, in which they had some awesome costumes over there. And um, we ended up going to uh, uh, John Morton's table again. And I immediately just went up to him and said, John, look, I don't expect you to mem- remember us or anything. And I explained the story to him five years ago. I even pulled out my phone, show him a picture of Trevor and how tall he was back then and everything. You know, Trevor's like a, grown ass man now so he's powers me and so he was just super excited to hear about it we we again got to have a long deep conversation with him and everything you know and he was very interested you know with 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 the kids and you know how well they're doing and you know with sports and stuff like that and you know we were just we just got to have a good time and so kevin you know he got the autograph picture that you saw earlier right there and uh what does it say again on there kevin what did he write down for us he goes when he asked who we make it out to, I said, please make it out to the Beers of War, because this isn't just for me. This is for all of us. Mm-hmm. And it says, to the Beers of War, walk in the way. John Morton, Bespin Boba. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I cannot put into words how gracious and kind that man was. He, he was, it, it was like talking to an old friend like we'd known him for 20 years. Just, just absolutely friendly, gracious, Glad to be there. Glad to talk with everybody. It, it was it was really really wonderful. And so you know we've got more famous people on the wall on the wall of fame over here behind us. We've got Mike Coulter and Jason Momoa, um, Lavar Burton, Mark Hamill, Billy D. Williams, the Four Hobbits, Peter Mayhew. But uh, this one is this one's personal because of how kind and how generous and how friendly. Uh, John Morton is, and so this one's going to take a cherished place on the uh, on the wall of fame over here at HQ because um, we may meet more famous people. I doubt we'll ever meet anyone that's as kind as this gentleman was. And they like that a change of pace for them that somebody could bring up something different other than oh my god you're my favorite celebrity or something like yeah. that. Got, you guys allowed him to connect more on a personal level. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he allowed us, you know, and, yeah, he allowed us too. Yeah. and that, that's, you know, I will always remember that Mark Hamill called us fat. No, he, called you fat. Call. He, just, he didn't call, call, call you fat. He just said we needed to get a wider lens. That was it. There's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. This is true. Um, but, uh, but um, I, I will also always remember um, how kind and generous John Morton is um, yeah john if you happen to see this by any chance thank you 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 really you you, you made our day and you you have a distinguished place over here on the wall of fame you're here <laughs> that's I good to hear. beer beer <laughs> beer 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 dilly dilly so anything uh, else anything else exciting happen at the cons is there anything cool uh well I mean, I got another picture here. Let me uh, see if I can turn this light off here for you because it kind of that ring gets in the way. So I'm like at the end on Saturday. I'm hanging out, you know, with some fellow beers members, you know, Brian and Stephan and everything. And this guy literally had a wing to himself to get pictures and autographs and all that kind of stuff. And we got to get a photo op with uh, Darth Vader. I don't know if you guys can see it well enough or anything because my camera's in the way. But yeah, we're uh, with Hayden Christensen. Yep. So uh, Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, we got the picture taken. I was like, I told Brian, I was like, I'm going to do the force choke in the picture. And he did the force choke too. So it worked out pretty cool. And um, 
one other picture that I ended up getting and got, got him, getting, got him. I got to meet somebody I always wanted to meet since I was a kid because I was always a fan of his movies and everything. And I think I made my wife a little jealous on this too. Cause before I show it, <laughs> before I show it, it was like, I sent it after I got done getting the picture taken. It was right after, you know, Rosaria Dawson. Sorry. And uh, so anyways, um, I, I saw him and I was like, I'm not probably not going to get this chance for a while or anything like that. So I got my picture taken with this person. It was more of a selfie because they took my phone and took pictures of him. And so I sent, you know, Sean a, a text message. I say, look, don't get upset. But uh, I did a thing. Something happened. Just promise me you won't, you, you know, you won't freak out. She goes, what? What is it? And then I took a picture of it. And I got to meet Ralph Macchio. <laughs> aka the karate kid oh, yeah. right there cobra kai ralph macchio man like that was one of her crushes back in the day and everything like she was just stoked about it dude and he was super nice too man he was just really cool i mean you know if i had had any complaints about him you know he uses an iphone but that's it you know that's it. <laughs> so i mean other than that he was a really cool dude to meet and everything and then um i didn't get a chance i wanted to show everybody this Everybody knows that I am a huge Gears of War fan, right? And so I've only met one voice actor in my life, and it was actually the one I wanted to meet the most. That was Fred Tattashore, who plays Damon Baird in the series. But he's also played a lot of famous roles. He's even in the Destiny series and everything. Well, I was walking, getting ready to make my way over to Hayden Christensen and everything, and I looked over, and I knew who this guy was. I knew who he was, but I was like, I don't know, do I, you know what? YOLO. So I decided to do it. His name is um, Michael Goff. Now, when I approached his table and I was talking to him, I was like, look, man, I'm a big fan of your, your voice acting work. I love you in the Gears of War series. And, uh, you know, he plays uh, the Carmines. And, uh, he, you know, he plays um, Anthony, Benjamin, Clayton. All of them, you know, we got to talking. Well, during the whole conversation that I was having with them and everything, you know, he, he was just very humble and everything. But he decided to make sure uh, he corrected me on something. It turns out all these years I was pronouncing his last name wrong. Right. So it wasn't Gao. It was Goff. And I was like, OK, well, now I know this. And it was really cool. But he goes, so who's your favorite Carmine? I was like, look, I, I got to say Clayton is. But I love all the Carmines that you paid. So. I ended up getting um, a picture of all with him on it with all three of the Carmines on there. And what he wrote on here was he goes um, to Tim mm, bacon. <laughs> <laughs> now to kind of bring that up of why he said it that way, that's actually probably one of my favorite Carmine uh, quotes, but I didn't, he asked me if I if he wanted uh, to put it on there, uh, like, you know, some kind of car, car, uh, Carmine quote. And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. That could have been any perfect because there's two ways he said mm, bacon in the game. In Gears of War 3, they were in a scene where, um, you know, they come up cross stranded and everything. They were talking about wanting to trade, you know, food and ammo and all that kind of stuff. And they saw one of the uh, uh, Gears girls there. It was Sam. And he was like, man, I'd trade her for, uh, you know, a side of bacon or something like that. And then you hear Carmine saying, mm, bacon. And Damon Baird was like saying, take the deal, Cole. I haven't had bacon in six months. But he was just messing around, you know, maybe. <laughs> Anyways, what was really cool about the Carmines in the Gear series is every Carmine that was ever in a Gear series always died. Anthony got sniper, sniper struck in the head right there. Not too long after playing in the first game and everything. And then in Gears of War 2, you had Benjamin Carmine, which he was in there for a little while and everything. And he he kind of went out. It, it was pretty bad, actually. And then when Gears 3 was coming out, they threw a campaign out there about save Carmine or I think it was death to Carmine. Well, there was so many votes in that they decided to save Carmine. So Clayton Carmine was saved. Well, anyways, we got to see Clayton Carmine. Spoiler alerts. He lives in Gears of War 3 and everything. But... One of the uh, developers over there, they or somebody decided to make an alternate ending for Clayton Carmine's death. And you see him all decked out, full outfit and everything. He's sitting in a hot bathtub, right? Just listening to some, some kind of music and whatever. He's got a plate of bacon right next to him. Well, he also had a toaster right next to him. So when he went to go reach for the plate of bacon, going, mmm, bacon, that quote, <laughs> right? The toaster fell in there. 
Clayton yeah. Carmine dies by frying in a, a watery death of electrocution. So that was really cool, man. That was really awesome meeting him. He put his autograph there and everything. I'm looking forward to getting it framed and hanging it up on my wall of fame. So that was that was some awesome experience I had over there. Loved it. Sounds like you guys had uh, fun at the last two uh, cons. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Bigness is trying to talk me into the Austin con, which is in September. Yeah, but there's barbecue in Austin, Kevin. There is barbecue in Austin. There's Franklin's. There's Leroy and Lewis, which I really want to go to because they have something called a bacon rib, which is basically a pork rib, a pork spare rib with a bacon because the, ba- the way the pig's set up, the pork ribs here comes in. The bacon's on the back side of that. Mm, the, they keep it together, Ooh. and they cure it like bacon, and then they smoke it like a like a rib. And yeah, yeah, that I, sounds I, amazing. I, I need that. I need it. Not want. Need that. Um. So, and of course, there's Franklin's, which you have to be in line at like five in the morning or four in the morning to get get any barbecue there. Um, there's also a place we've been dying to go called Foreign and Domestic. So uh, we may we may just go to Austin one random weekend because Dr. Timbalu is there, who uh, who has done a Friday vibes with us and has um, been here for a beers party. He is a fellow beers of war. He has his he has done the shot. And um, yeah, we may just go on a just go to Austin just to go eat at like eighteen different places. And that's how you snag him to do the AI podcast we want to do. Yeah, he's down. He's down. It's just a matter of of aligning schedules. Right now, he's in uh, he's in California for his birthday week. Which, if he's seeing this, happy birthday, Tim. We love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. He also gave me my first sip of absinthe, which was one of the stranger alcohol experiences I've had. It was mine too. Yeah. Was it anything I thought it would be like? And honestly, I do it again. 104 year old bottle of absinthe. 1805 or something. No, what was no, it? No, no, it was 1905. 1905. Yeah. What does that even remotely taste like? Or is it just off totally different taste compared to what we're used to? Black licorice. That or like the way he had us drink it, it was either black licorice or maybe like a very faint mouthwash or something like that. So, yeah, it, yeah, it, 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 was, it was as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was like, yeah. when I took it, I was like, I was really worried. But then when I drank it and I was like, oh, but that's really damn good because he, he did some kind of like uh, it's not a chemical reaction or something, but it had to do with ice and water or something like that mm-hmm. and how you blend it in and everything because it changed color when you do it. Yeah, it went from a dark green to a very pale green. Yeah, so it was pretty good. It was I, I actually enjoyed it. I wouldn't mind trying it again. I, I actually now have bragging rights saying I had absent from 1905. So worked out. Yeah, that's one thing yeah. I don't know if I ever want to. First, I don't know how to remotely drink because it doesn't have to be served a certain way. Yeah, it does. I, it's it's uh, I'm gonna have to get him to explain it to you um, when we do the AI podcast um, because I, I don't know how he he had some stuff set up he had a little thing over here and there was like smoke coming out of this and it was you know it looked like Doctor Benson Honey did and so I'm over here just like Beaker did me 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 <laughs> took the took the shot and it was it was it was definitely it was it was delicious it was a very unique experience. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do, yeah. I do it again, all over yeah. again. Oh yeah, most definitely. I got a question for you though, Brandon. Yeah, do you guys like have some kind of like Oktoberfest that goes on over there or something like that? Uh, we got a few. Uh, I mean, you got, a few things. Yeah, we got a, a restaurant called the Rathskeller. They guys a beer garden and during that time. Yeah. I only ask because you guys got some pretty good like home home brews over there and everything. I mean, like, a lot I, of. I think even Sun King I think comes out with an Oktoberfest brew. Um, 
a lot of people do. A lot of the local guys will come up with something for Oktoberfest, and then, and then there's a few places that will have like beer gardens and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's some good stuff right there. That Wee Mac, that, that stuff's good. Anybody yeah, ever oh. try it out? Try that Wee Mac. Again, not sponsored. Just like your guys' work. But we will take sponsorships. We will take sponsorships. Did the we cat knock that down? No, it came, came undone. Don't stay away from the picture over there, okay? All right? <laughs> no, she's too busy on the table trying to get me to pet her. Headbutt me and uh, being nosy. So, oh, okay. we, got, we got Gen Con coming up here at the end of the month. Biggest four days in gaming for people who don't know. Vi board gaming, not video games. But hey, you, bit, you guys have yeah, celebrities yeah. that show up there too. Voice actors and stuff, don't you? A lot of people don't know if they're going to show up because of the strike. If they're part really? of the... Yeah. Wow. It's it's probably going to affect the cons too. Unless Now some people are saying that um, some people will go and complete their contractual obligation stuff that was signed before the strike mm -hmm. and they won't sign anything new. So... Yeah, because I seen what the long view that was it Austin St. John pulled out the day of, like two yeah. days, like two yeah, days, two days before. before. Yeah, yeah, he said he had he was double booked, so I was like, I saw it on Twitter, so I was being nosy, and I was like trying to figure out what else did he have scheduled. Nothing he had listed on his any of his pages had anything scheduled, other than what you guys did. I mean, I wasn't going there to see him in the first place. I mean, no right. offense to the guy or anything like that, but. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it wasn't a double book thing. Maybe it was. I don't know the story, but wasn't you know, he in a lot some of legal trouble though. I was gonna say he, you know, that that was that was a lot of things people were bringing up that was involved with thread and everything that happened in there. But yeah, there was. I don't know exactly what happened. Honestly, I had no interest in learning about. It. All I know is it had to do with like money or embezzlement or something like that. But I mean, you can't just you know you, there was people actually going to that con just to see him. Right. Yeah. You know, so in some ways he actually let a lot of people down too. There was actually people trying to go in. I saw on the Facebook thread of the Longview Comic Con, like saying, Hey, I got these tickets to the Longview Comic Con. Does anybody want to buy them and everything like that? And I was like, damn. You should still go. Everybody should experience like if you if you in a like a small hometown, you know, I mean, obviously big cities are gonna have the bigger cons and everything, but small hometowns actually have something to offer, something to bring. Yeah to the table and everything you have a totally different experience i always have a different experience i my my mindset is also different when i'm in a, a local comic con and everything too yeah. you know i'm mostly there to look around shop take pictures have a good time with my friends and everything like that and then maybe occasionally meet a voice actor or two i've actually the first person i actually got like kind of really starstruck was actually in the, uh, the local Comic-Con that we had here and everything. His name was Michael Bell, and I was a huge fan of his voice work, especially in the Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver series and everything. And I got to talk to this guy. You get to spend more time with these people over you there, do. you know, and you just, do. you know, just build something on it. Now, I haven't seen him, you know, back there since or anything like that, but I remember the experience, and that's, that's what I love the most about going to our local Comic-Cons is that, you get a totally different experience there than what you would over uh, at a bigger con. Not saying that the bigger cons are bad or anything. I love the big cons and everything. I loved this con uh, back in, in Dallas because that was the Mecca right there. Like having a three day pass, I should have done this years ago and everything. And to be that close to Rosario Dawson. So that was great. You know, we all had a great time. So Tim's going to be watching Ahsoka totally different than me and Kevin will. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Better buy, then, your, so, better you know, buy your Jurgen stock. Like, and kind of, kind of climb out or kind of parroting what Tim was saying. Um, it feels like you're supporting the culture. Mm -hmm. And I, nerd, nerd, nerd culture is still kind of a, I, I guess there are some people that still kind of frown upon it. Oh, you still like comic books and video games? Yes, I do. I like comic books. I like video games. And I'm almost 50. And this stuff is a lot of fun and it's okay to enjoy yourself and like what you like, enjoy what you enjoy and you support the culture. And it's really cool to see everyone from parents to little kids really embrace, dress up, 
go out, you take pictures with them, you talk to them. It, it's much more uh, intimate, I guess you could say, uh, to go to these local cons. You support local uh, local vendors. Um, we bought we bought three or four pieces of artwork, and the stuff tends to not be as expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, so so we 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 made out like bandits here with some stuff at this con. We had a really 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 good time. We even and saw it's a great vendors. way to introduce other people to the culture too. Yeah, and we saw vendors from the Dallas Comic Con come over to the local Comic Cons mm-hmm. and everything. So they're they're all around, you know. They yeah, sorry, guys, I got to step off for just a second. Mm-hmm. They definitely we, got uh, comfortable. One of the last times that me and Misty went to the Dallas Comic Con, we actually ran into a vendor that we have seen at Gen Con a few times, and I even told him that we've seen him at Gen Con and bought stuff from him at Gen Con. He even gave us another twenty five percent discount. So, and he gave us a card that if we came back to um, uh, back to that year, if we came back to Gen Con that year and wanted to buy anything else, we get another discount. Who was it? It was a guy who was making these uh, like cartoon like characters and superheroes on these metal plates. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. That kind of shiny and reflective. Yeah. So he was doing that. That's pretty cool, man. If you can make those kind of contacts, because like. You know, he ain't, he ain't lying. Like, some of the stuff was pretty decent priced at our local Comic Con and everything. Dallas was, like, expensive. How was the how was the crowd for the Longview one? I will say, the as far as the Longview one, I, well, we got there a little bit later. You know, we, we made an appointment, uh, I think, to get there around 1 or 2 o'clock. And so by the time I got there, I was able to find a parking spot close by. And, you know, I'm seeing people coming in and still going out and everything. And um, so... It was pretty fair, you know. There was a quite a few people over there and everything. Where do they where do they have it at in Longview? Uh, I believe it's uh, they call it the Mod Cop Center, is what it is. Every year, you know, we've had all sorts of events there. I've never seen that building. No, I don't think we've ever taken you near that area before. But we'll, we'll do it next time you're down and everything. It's it's a decent sized building. It doesn't take long to circle around it and everything, you know. But when the more vendors you have in there, they'll make more slots and spaces. So gives you time to kind of like just go around and around and around and around, you know? So uh, a lot of stuff. Now I, I did get busted though over there at the local uh, comic con because, you know, I'm, I'm the type of guy who will go there in video footage and I will take pictures and everything. Well then one guy approached me and saying I had to turn my video camera off because I couldn't apparently video camera, like, um, you know, uh, hacksaw Jim Duggan and all the other people that were in that section of the building and whatnot and everything. And I'm like, looking at this guy, I'm like, since when did they start doing that? And I, I basically said that to him and everything, you know, I, what I really wanted to say was you stand in reject of a Momoa looking guy, you know, cause that's what he was. He was like short, he had the hair and everything, you know, trying to look like he was some kind of badass or whatever. And I was like, okay, you know what, whatever. So I turned it off. And when he would look away, I turned it back on. So, you know, stuff like that. I did what I want, but so yeah, who, we, didn't want, who didn't want videotaped is the question. Supposed to be uh, videoing oh, yeah. anybody in the section where the celebrities are and whatnot. Yeah. So you know, they had Zord on there from Power Rangers, the guy who did the face and everything. You couldn't get that or whatnot. I almost got a video, but I didn't. I wasn't able to get it. Um, but yeah, it was just like in that area. So I guess he was like the hall monitor. Yeah. In that section, you know, so I was like, okay, well, I mean, I can understand that, but sort of, maybe, I don't know. I've done it before when I was over there. I remember when Ernie Reyes Jr. was over there and everything, he was dancing with the Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. I was like, how do you miss, you can't miss that. You got to take footage of that. So I did. I'm not marketing it or anything for profit no. or whatnot. It's it's an no. experience that I got to see, you know, I got it on video. So speaking of cons, uh, I saw a post on a, a- Gen Con page I'm on about cosplaying and their pe- actors and actresses are coming out and requesting that people and su- and to support them during the, the strike not to cosplay as their movie character so they could cosplay as like the video game or the comic book or like of those characters, but they can't, they don't, they request a, a solidarity movement not to cosplay as their movie or slash TV version of their character. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, that's, that's a post that. going around. I, I will say this though, 
Dallas Comic Con and our local Comic Con, there was a theme going on that this year. A lot of it had to do with, you know, characters I didn't recognize, and it was mostly anime characters this time. Because normally, when you go to it, like a big Comic Con, like in Dallas or something like that, you know, there's you got your Harley Quinns, you got your Deadpool's, you got your, you know, Joker's, your Batman's, you know, um, you know, the main a lot of main characters, your Captain Americas, your Thors, and stuff like that. That's a lot of times of what we see over there and everything. But a lot of it had to do with a much younger audience and who's really into anime and everything. And I'll, I'll tell you what, man, like a lot of these kids, even adults, were very creative in the costumes. Like some, I don't know who you are, but this is a really awesome costume. I, I want to take a picture of it, you know. So, you know, we do things like that. So there, you can always tell there's a theme each year. And there tends to there tends to be a theme of uh, whoever's there, like the celebrities over there, because Rosario Dawson was there. She's playing Ahsoka. You saw a lot of people who were cosplayed as Ahsoka. Exactly. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio was there. So I saw several people who dressed as Kingpin. Or Jedi. I can't see yeah. how they did that because it was hot. But um, but you saw a lot of people who would cosplay kind of as the guests and get into photos with the guests that were um, that were the roles that they were played, that, that they played before. Yep. Well, I did a quick Google search on that cosplay during the strike, and mo- the they're saying cosplaying during co- if you're going to cosplay during a strike, it's not considered scabbing, and it's actually it's not frowned upon. Like some people are trying to twist it. So it was probably somebody trying to start a trend on social media to get people not to cosplay, probably but not real not realizing that what they're doing is not why so because i know people are worried about scat scabbing and they're bringing in people to cover roles and stuff like that so hopefully this strike doesn't last long i hope not yeah i usually don't yeah when it starts hitting in the ad the last writer strike lasted for several months it really delayed some uh series and then it shortened some seasons so i think it affected one of the seasons of the uh of supernatural one year I'm really curious because there's been such a migration from cable TV, from conventional TV to streaming services now where, where really there isn't a, you know, most of the time when September comes, you have all these new series start, right? Right. Well, that's not really the case anymore because of, because so many people stream instead of um, watch just regular cable. So I'm curious because you would think the writer strike would affect them, would affect the networks and all that stuff around you know august september you know you want to get those new shows out but that's not really the case anymore new shows come out all the time so i'm curious how that's going to impact the writer's strike well and and that was another point that they were saying that they're arguing about too is the streaming service the streaming side that people feel like they're not getting the proper amount of royalties from where you could track it easier on tv but just posted on a streaming site you don't know how many times it's being viewed or if it's being viewed at all the only people know is the streaming site so and that's another thing that they're that's holding up the contract for the actors and And the only way you can gauge it by the number of subscribers to the streaming site now has anybody heard whether or not the uh actors and the screenwriters is that going to affect anything on the gaming community side or is that a totally different group i wonder because you get you end up with something like Warner Brothers where they kind of have their toe in both in you know, they kind of have a foot in both worlds. Warner Brothers has a game studio, but they also make television. They also make movies. So you you wonder how that's going to affect them versus somebody like say Microsoft. I mean, and the same thing with Sony. Sony has a a, a a pictures division, and so but they also have the game division. So if you have somebody come in and you know going to do voice acting for a script, do you not let them come in? Or are they on strike too? Or are the actors on strike if it's a live action show? So I'm curious how that works. Actually, I've got a uh, answer to that question. Even during okay. the strike, actors can still participate in these shows because they have different contracts. They can also uphold other contracts for gigs like voice work and video games, animated TV shows, audio books, and dub- dubbing for foreign language projects. Oh, okay, cool. So, yes, they can still. 
And a lot of people said this is where some of the gaming side is going to take off because you're going to have some of these B and C actors needing some money. They're going to go voice go voice act. Yeah, to bring I would. In revenue. So, absolutely. What? Colors in the time. Ugh, I got Actually, a lot let's, of let's talk about one last thing, and then we can go on. I know we've talked about this before, but major announcement in the. Xbox Blizzard Activision case. The federal judge blocked the FTC and it's allowed to move forward here in the United States. And then a couple days after that ruling came out, Phil Spencer announced on Twitter that we are pleased to announce that Microsoft and PlayStation have signed a binding agreement to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation following the acquisition of Activision and Blizzard. We look forward to the future where players globally have more choices to play their favorite games. Then turn around and put the kick in the bucket. Xbox is going to make Spyro and Crash Bandicoot exclusives. Wow. Yep. They're going to take that from PlayStation and make them exclusive, is the rumor going around now. Uh, It's it's, it's a fair trade-off. PlayStation wanted, all PlayStation wanted was Call of Duty. That's all they wanted. I mean, it is a cash cow to have and everything like that, but I would definitely give PlayStation this. They, personally, I love Xbox, don't get me wrong. I mean, one of my main consoles, of course, but PlayStation makes, I think, hands down the best exclusives, and they can't take that away. You know, so they're going to be around for the long run. Xbox is going to be around for the long run. I'm actually kind of glad this whole thing just finally got resolved and everything like that, because... I kind of got worried there for a while because I wondered how this was going to affect my gameplay with other people that I know overseas. You know, you know, you guys know overseas. Right. And I still talk to these guys, you know, and so and I have a really good time gaming with them and everything. So I'm glad this this has finally got resolved and everybody can just move on from it. And everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think what eventually came out as more came out in the trial phase of it was the what PlayStation was preventing, wanting to prevent Xbox from doing, come out that PlayStation was doing it behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Okay, I think that's about it. Ooh, ooh. A new, oh, uh, oh. a new free flowing version of the show. Let us know if you like it in the uh, in the comments. Let us know if you like the free flowing version of the show, or if you like something a little more bracketed and topical. I mean, we're here for you. Yeah, I mean, just come up with some things. You know what you want to hear us talk about? Maybe get our opinions on it or anything like that. You don't have to be beers of war. You know, we look forward to hearing what you guys saying. Like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you click that that bell, whatever the hell it is. Yeah, and we're gonna try to get start working on getting content out more frequently too. Yes, yes. we are. Yeah, hopefully live. Life will stop getting in the way. Stupid life. What are we drinking, fellas? Uh, Peach Crown. Always keep my Peach Crown bottle right next to my pod table. Beer Ninja is going to be doing his beer. I've got some Casa Amigos tequila courtesy of my uh, fraternity brother, John Angel, who turned me on to it. It is delicious. Fellas, one more time. If you drink, if you drink may, may you drink, drink with me. With me. Good stuff. Oh, that's good I wish stuff. I could say that about my crown. <laughs> Is it not smooth? Yeah. Wait, you say it was peach crown, right? Yeah. It's better mixed than a straight. Hmm. Are you a tequila guy, Brandon? Nah, eh, somewhat. Okay. <coughs> so. Who's introducing yeah. Give a couple minutes. Give a couple seconds, and we'll do a knockout an intro. Okay. I, think I, did, I think I did the last one. Somebody else wants to I'll knock it you. out. No, actually, Tim did it last one. I think I did it, and then I think Kevin. I yeah, think it's you your pointed. turn. Bro. You pointed. That's Kevin, right? Yep, that's yeah. Kevin this time. Yep, that's me. Yes. Y'all ready? Yep, ready. I know it's been a while, guys, but we are back like we never left. It is Beer Ninja, it is Matilda, and it is me, Sir Bigness, with another exciting episode of the Beers of War podcast. We're glad to have you. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. 
If you drink, may you drink with me. Sounds cool. good. 